Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well and your year is going great so far. For today's video, I'm going to do a review of my 2022 wish list to see what I finally ended up getting, which pieces lost my interest over the year and which pieces are still on my mind and therefore will go again on my 2023 wish list alongside some other new objects of desire that I'm also going to share with you. I structured my 2022 wish list into six categories, which were ready to wear, handbags, shoes, jewelry, accessories, and homeware. So let's start by having a look at the ready to wear pieces that I was looking out for one year ago. The first piece that I mentioned in last year's wish list video is that checked to Tem signature woolen cashmere mix coat that was incredibly hyped at that time. I remember my Instagram feed being full of that coat. I feel like every single girl who style I admire had this coat. Seeing something so often really makes you want it, but for some reason I never ended up getting this coat. I even saw it on sale at one point but I was too slow to get it in my size and when it came back in stock I was not ready to pay full price for an item that was already reduced and where I knew that I could get it for a better price. So time went by and as we went into the spring season I slowly lost interest as the checked style and the colors are quite wintry. I have to say I do still like the style although I'm no longer the biggest fan of that loose collar so I'm not really regretting not getting it. It does not feel like that one thing that got away so I will also drop this item from this year's list. There were quite a few pieces from Totem on last year's wish list. Another piece that I wanted is the cable knit, which I actually did get in this camel color here. I also mentioned the off-white one back then, which I'm still considering, so I will add this item to this year's wish list again in the white color. The quality of this sweater is absolutely perfect. It is made out of 100% cashmere and it is so cozy to wear and so easy to style. Definitely has become one of my wardrobe staples, so I can imagine getting it in another color. And there was one more totem ready to wear piece on my 2022 wish list, which is the monogram silk PJ set. Also did not go for this one yet, but I still like it. So I will also add this one once again to my 2023 wish list, And I would also still go for the same color, which is ivory. Let's move on to another brand. I also had a couple of Anina Bing pieces on my wish list, And one of those was the Kaya Houndstooth Blazer, which I did not get. And honestly, I also never really thought about it again, but I did try on the jacket version of this blazer. I was not happy with the fit of it as the sleeves were quite puffy, which I didn't like that much, so this one also disappeared from my wish list. I've also seen the Rory Teddy jacket in store, but I didn't like the synthetic material as I already predicted in last year's video, so I also passed on this one. I got that monogram sports bra that I wanted and I wear it a lot in the gym, so this one was definitely a good pick, but I never found the matching leggings in my size and they never came back in stock, so yeah, I just have half of this set. I also mentioned that grey sweater. I tried it on, but did get a hoodie instead, which I like even more as it's super cozy. The last piece in my ready to wear category was this Jonathan Simkai striped knit cardi, which I had already ordered at the time when I filmed the 2022 wishlist video and which is still one of my favorite knitwear pieces in my closet. Let's come to my favorite category, which is handbags. On top of my list, I had the Chanel classic flap in either white or beige in the small or medium size with either yellow gold or champagne gold hardware. I found a small beige classic flap in Paris in June, which is this beauty here, but I'm still on the hunt for the white one because this is super hard to get in the stores currently. If you're interested in details about this bag here, I have an own dedicated video where I unboxed it, so make sure to watch it. Considering the price increases that Chanel implied throughout the year and which will probably still be implied throughout the next years, I am slowly losing interest in classic flaps, but the white one is actually the only one that is missing to complete my little collection. Well, I also could imagine getting a darker caramel brown shade, but this is not a priority. If I come across one, I might consider getting it, but I'm currently not actively looking out for it. To be honest, I'm slowly starting to give up on the white one, as I've been hunting for this one for so long, and I'm slowly getting a bit annoyed of being told that they have none all the time, every time I ask for it in the store. I also do not want to get a white bag from the resale market, so I think it's getting a bit pointless. 
If it happens, it happens. If not, then not. Another Chanel style that I also really like is the Chanel 19, of which I had the so-called Oreo or Cookies and Cream Tweed one on my wish list. Never came across this one, but I did get a small white one for Christmas, which is the perfect alternative for the white classic flap that doesn't want me to find it. The third Chanel model that I was eyeing is the Deauville, as I had no bigger shopping bag in my collection at this time. I did not find the striped one, but this beautiful dark beige one here instead, which I got in Paris in June in the Rue Cambon store, which makes it super special as the bag got the boutique's address on it. I saw the striped one on the resale market several times, but I am happy with my choice and I do not need another one for now. Another shopping bag model that I admired in 2022 is the Dior Book Toad, which I did not get as I bought the Chanel Deauville. I still like this bag, but as I said, I'm currently not in need of another shopping bag. And I do have to say that the Chanel Deauville is definitely way more practical and comfortable to wear with its longer shoulder straps and with the many pockets that it has inside, which is perfect for organizing, which the Dior Book Toad has not. It is basically blank inside and it also only comes with short top handles like this. So I think this is definitely the better choice if you're looking for the perfect shopping bag to carry around much stuff in it. Another bag that I dropped from my list is the Dior Bobby bag. As again already correctly predicted in my video from one year ago, it's a style that I did not like for a very long time, so I completely lost interest in it, as I think it's a quite, may I dare to say, boring bag. There's just nothing special about it that catches my eye. Next up we have the Anina Bing Tail in Toad. I think there's not much to say about this bag anymore. I got it, I don't like it, it was a failed purchase. If you're interested in details about this, you can watch my previous video where I rate my best and worst purchases of 2022. I did not end up buying the YSL Solferino and Sunset bag. I actually don't really know why, but I guess I just never spent many thoughts on these anymore. I also did not get the Lulu in the toy size, as I'm happy with the small and the medium that I already got. If you're interested in seeing them more in detail, make sure to watch my video where I compare these two. I also did not get the Celine Bell bag and I don't really know why because I still like the style. I think it might have to do with the fact that I just don't see this bag that often anymore, like out of sight, out of mind, I guess. I don't really understand why this bag lost its relevance and why only that few people are still wearing it. It just disappeared somehow. I would still see myself wearing this bag. As mentioned, I really like the style, but currently it's just not a priority. I'm glad that I did not get the Bottega Veneta cassette. It is not a bad bag, but I've just seen it too often and at some point I just lost interest in it. On top of my handbag wish list, I had a black Birkin 25, which I did not get the chance to make mine, but is still on my wish list. So let's see if I will get my hands on it this year. I did get the strap for my Dior saddle, which I love, although it was a little bit annoying to see that Dior started selling the saddle including a leather shoulder strap in 2022, which was obviously not the case when I got it. My bag only had this top handle here and I had to pay extra to get this strap. However, I've also seen that Dior increased the price of the saddle with this strap included, so it balances out a bit again. But I have to say, I really like the style of this canvas strap here and I think it was worth it as it just gives the bag this little extra special twist. Let's come to shoes. I wanted to get a pair of black Chanel boots and I did, but not the ones that I was thinking of in January last year. I got a bit higher version instead, which is this one here and I'm absolutely in love with this shoe. So I would say we can still tick off this one. In 2022, I was clearly obsessed with Totem and I'm still a big fan of the brand. So I also got the Totem riding boots, which were also on my wish list. One can never have enough black classic high boots, right? I did not get the beige Gucci loafers, which also kind of disappeared. These shoes were also so hyped for a while, but now I barely see people wearing them anymore. And I also kind of lost interest. I mean, I still like the beige color and I still like the style, but yeah, as I said, I did not really think about them anymore, so I did not end up getting them. I got a pair of white Chanel sneakers in May, but not the ones that I initially wanted, as they were out of stock for quite a while. They were only available in colored versions with a pop of pink or blue, which I don't like. So when I came across these ones here, I thought they are the perfect alternative and it turned out to be a good decision. I love wearing them, they are so comfortable and 
as they are white sneakers that basically match every outfit. Nevertheless, I would still like to get the other pair, so if I will come across them this year, I will certainly not miss out on a chance. I did not get the Celine sneakers, but I got the Chimichu Hawaii Pearl sneakers instead to add something more fancy and a little bit extra to my white sneakers collection. Unfortunately, these shoes are starting to lose their pearls, which is a pity. I think it's not worth the effort to return them to Jimmy Jew, as this problem will probably reoccur, but I did order some spare pearls on Amazon so that I can fix them myself whenever needed. Then I also had the MS orange sandals in black on my wish list, and I can tick off this checkbox as I got them gifted for my birthday this year. I do really like them, so I might be looking out for another pair in a lighter color this year. Another wishlist item that I got gifted is the Celine Double Knot Bracelet, which I had some quality issues with at the beginning, but now everything is fine and I do really enjoy wearing it. Another piece that was on my wishlist, which I also had quality issues with, is this Dainty Dior ring. It started tarnishing pretty quickly, so I returned it to the Dior boutique and they sent it to Paris to check and finally they also decided that they are going to replace it but three months later, I'm currently still waiting for it to arrive. Again, I am talking about those quality issues more in detail in my previous video, so if you're interested in that, make sure to watch it. What I did not get from my jewelry wish list is the Cartier Love Bracelet and Ring. Still something that I'm dreaming of though, so maybe 2023 will be the year. I did get the Chanel ear studs that I have talked about in my wish list video of 2022. I think I've actually never shown them on YouTube, but yeah, as said, I got them and I have to say that I really like them. So far they hold up very well and I'm happy with the quality, so this was definitely a good purchase. I did not get any watch this year. I did try on the Cartier Panthère to see which size fits me best, but doing my research I know that this watch gets very easily scratched and also does not hold its value very well, so I did not buy it when I was in the store. I still want this watch, so I might look out for some good options on the resale market this year. I'm just not not sure yet if I prefer the gold or the mixed metals version. Coming to accessories, I got the MS reversible belt with the gamma buckle, just not in the original color combo that I wanted, which was Biscuit Nata, but in black and gold instead, which is equally beautiful. As I still wanted a light one too, I ended up getting another one in a tube blanc with the silver age cursive buckle. So now I have endless combination options and I love to play around uh, and mix and match my different leather straps with the two buckles that I got. I also got the Celine Triumph belt as a Christmas gift. Again, in another color than the one that I originally wanted. I was planning to get it in white, but I got the black black one gifted instead, which is absolutely beautiful. I'm so in love with this piece. It is currently my favorite belt. I did not get the Celine rectangular sunglasses and I really don't know why to be honest, but probably because I was drawn to a couple of other models such as this Dior one and this YSL one here. And at some point I decided that I really have enough sunnies and I stopped myself from buying more. I thought about getting this Gucci wool scarf, but I actually did not buy any single scarf in 2022, which is fine as I definitely have enough in my closet. I also managed to get my hands on the black Chanel flap card holder in lambskin with gold hardware, which is quite high in demand. Such a classic piece, so I'm glad that I could make it mine. And last but not least, we have home goods. I wanted to get the MS Avalon blanket and pillow in coco chamomile and obviously i did find the blanket but i did not manage to find the pillow yet so i will keep looking out for this one but what i found are the black and white hco coffee cups as well as the mosaic tray the last piece on my 2022 wish list was the louis vuitton nice bb beauty case which i also got obviously and which i really love as i'm using this on a daily basis storing all my makeup and skincare stuff in there so looking back now i can really cross off a lot of things that i envisioned to get which is nice to see see as it shows that creating such lists really does help to keep the focus on those things that you really want and not getting distracted by too much other unnecessary stuff and impulsive purchases that you might end up not liking for a very long time. In this sense, let's move on to see what I got on my wish list for 2023. I decided to stick to the same categories as last year, so we will start again with ready to wear. We talked about the check to temp code and although I do not plan to get this specific one anymore, I'm still looking out for a nice high quality quality winter coat in a creamy or off-white color. Not too crisp, but more like a warm white. Thinking Max Mara, Joseph or to Tem still, but I'm pretty much open to any brand as long as the coat comes in the perfect fit and cut 
has a natural material such as wool or cashmere, is not too thin and has obviously the perfect shade that I'm looking for. As already mentioned before, I still have the Sotem PJ set on my mind or at least the blouse in ivory. I did get a white Lueva silk blouse in December but this one is totally different as it is clean white without any patterns very simple, whereas the Totem one is more of a statement piece. So let's see if I will pull the trigger this year. And as already mentioned, I love my Totem cable knit, so I'm still thinking about getting the off-white version of that. It's not only perfect for winter, but pretty much wearable all year round, as it's very lightweight, so it is also perfect to wear throughout spring as well as on colder summer evenings. What I was also thinking about is getting a knit from Kate as I don't own anything from this brand yet but I only heard good things about it so far and this was also actually already the first purchase of 2023 so I can already tick off this checkbox from my wish list as I got this beautiful knit that I am wearing now. It is from Kate and I got it 60% off in sale so it was a perfect piece and a perfect sale find to get and I could not resist and it turned out to fit perfectly. I love the color, it is super cozy, it is pure cashmere and I think it's just so so nice so I can really recommend this brand. And this is the first wishlist item that we can already tick off. I do not have that many handbags on my wishlist this year as I'm pretty happy with my current collection. What my collection is missing though is an Hermes bag so I would like to continue trying to get one this year. When I'm saying get one I don't mean any random MS bag but there are three particular models that I have on my mind. As already mentioned I would really like to get a classic black Birkin so this is still on top of my bag wish list, still in the 25 size but in the meantime I would also be open for a 30. I would still like to get it in Togo leather with gold hardware so fingers crossed that luck or the MS gods are on my side this year. The other two models that I would be open to are a mini Kelly or a Kelly pochette in Epsom or Swift leather in a lighter natural color thinking nata, cre, beton or maybe even etou. I'm pretty much open to any light natural shade here. I'm even open to some beige tones such as chai. Although I do think that the Kelly is more practical than the Birkin because of its shoulder strap, I cannot convince myself of the bigger Kelly sizes. I don't really know why, but somehow I just don't see myself wearing a Kelly in a 25 size, for example. If I would be so lucky to just get one out of these three bags in 2023, this would be an absolute dream. And if I happen to come across a white Chanel classic flap, I'll probably also not be able to resist. So let's put this one on the wish list once again. And that's it already for the handbags. Let's continue with shoes. I would still like to get this white pair of Chanel sneakers that I've been hunting since 2021 or so. When I asked for them last time, the essay told me that they're actually part of the classic collection. So they should come back in stock, maybe in spring, we'll see. So we all know that I have enough black boots now, but I still do romanticize with two black boot models from MS, which are the fiacre boots and the riding boots. As from what I've seen so far, the fiacre boots seem to be only available in bigger sizes. I guess they are from the men's collection, so unless MS does decide that they will also introduce them for women, I will probably not be able to get them as my feet are pretty small. The riding boots I already tried on once, but in one size too small. The shafts of those boots is super narrow, so I'm not even sure if they are made for me, but if I happen to come across them in my proper size, I will definitely give them another chance as I really like the style with the little Kelly buckle on top. The same size problem I have with the Chypre and Izmir sandals. They are also only available in 39 or bigger, which I cannot wear, but the essay told me that at least the Chypre ones should come in smaller sizes. I would love to get such a chunkier version of an MS sandal, but if not, I would also be open to get another pair of Orans in white or nude. If you've watched my previous video, you might know that the biggest lesson learned out of my 2022 purchases is quality over quantity, especially when it comes to jewelry. I no longer want to invest into custom jewelry pieces as the quality does not just come up to the price point. Having that said, I only have fine jewelry pieces on this year's wish list, and I will really try to focus on getting some of those and not getting distracted by any nice looking fashion jewelry. Long story short, I still do have the Cartier Love series on my wish list, as well as the Cartier Panthère watch in either gold or mixed metals. I also tried out the Santos last year, which I really Really like so I still need to think about which watch model I prefer. Another option that I'm considering is a bicolor Rolex Datejust with the Jubilee wristband with a black or white dial. I'm actually on the waitlist for one since half a year so let's see if it will come in this year but 
I for sure don't want to jinx it. In terms of earrings, I currently only have one thing on my wish list, which would be a pair of decent pearl earrings. I do not own any and I often have those moments where I think it would be actually nice to have a pair. Thinking of combining them with my Chimichu pearl sneakers or my Vogue pearl sweater, for example. I already browsed a bit and found two very nice options at Tiffany, but I would like to see them in real life and compare those two options. So maybe I'll check them out next time I'm near a Tiffany boutique. Talking Tiffany, another jewelry piece that I've been eyeing for quite a while is the Link Chain necklace in the graduated style. Not sure yet if I would go for silver or gold, but generally I think it's a really nice statement piece and it would add some interesting touch to my collection because I do not own such chunky pieces yet. If you think I have enough MS belts, you are wrong. There is one belt that I'm missing and that I'm often thinking of when styling outfits, which is the black MS Kelly belt with gold hardware. Yes, I do have the black reversible belt with a golden gamma buckle, but the thing is that I cannot wear it with high-waisted pants, which is a big advantage of the Kelly belt as you can basically adjust it to any length. As I enjoy wearing my Black Celine Triumph belt that much, I'm still thinking about getting it in a lighter version too. I've seen that there is currently a shade available called Trench, which looks like a beautiful light beige tone, so I'm considering getting this one as well. And finally, we come to the home stuff again. As I still did not find the Hermes Avalon pillow to match my blanket, I will keep trying to find it this year. Fingers crossed that I will be luckier than in 2022. Loving the MS coffee cups that I got last year so much, I would love to extend my little collection with another set of the HDCO white cups in an in-between size of the ones that I already have. And the last piece on my wish list for this year is the Firm Living Pond Mirror. I think this is such a nice and interesting piece, like a subtle piece of art, not too loud, but still an eye catcher. And that's it for my 2023 wish list. Creating such lists really does help me focusing on the things that I truly want and staying away from impulsive purchases or catchy sale offers that I might regret later. This year is all about investing in quality over quantity and in timeless forever pieces to build that perfect capsule wardrobe full of essentials that spark joy whenever I see and wear them. Having that said, I will now end this video here and start decluttering my wardrobe as I still have way too many things that I never wear. It's time to get rid of bad purchases of the past and make room for those high quality closet staples that I can't wait to incorporate into my capsule collection. Less is more and there's nothing better than an early spring clean and closet refresh. If you're still watching at this point, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of my wish list and maybe you are even open to share what you are having your eyes on this year. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and consider subscribing to my channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming ones. I wish you a lovely day and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye guys!